He's a guy that very much understands the game, always got his players to play within themselves. He's got to have a team here that shoots the ball well, knowing the way UCLA wants to get it out and run. Right away, Pete Carrillo comes out in a little 1 2 2 zone, forced the jump shot. It's Toby Bailey. Pull it up. And Toby Bailey knocks down the jump shot. Princeton has to know where the shooters are. Bailey is the guy that can shoot the ball with given time, so you've got to get out there. The real key here is the patience that UCLA has on their defense. If they get impatient, then they give Princeton a heck of a chance. UCLA, the defending national champions, they beat Arkansas in the championship game last season. Toby Bailey, 26 points. Here's Luellis for three. Rebounded by Bailey. Cameron Dollar, the point guard for UCLA. He's battled hand injuries the entire season. Our fourth and final game in the Southeast region, and Jelani McCoy rips it down there. UCLA in white, Princeton in black. Well, Princeton's problem is they've got to try to, first of all, slow down the Bruins. The Bruins want to run. They're as good a team in the country running. The other thing that the Bruins really they are going to do is they, they're going to back off defensively and force Princeton to make shots. When we talked to Pete Carrillo, the one thing he said is this is not one of his better shooting teams, and UCLA is going to try to prove that. Princeton known for patience on offense. A lot of backdoor cuts. Five on the shot clock. Here's Sidney Johnson. He'll have to force one. That's a three off the front of the rim. Rebounded by O'Bannon. Cameron Dollar. O'Bannon for three. Long rebound, and it's whipped inside. J.R. Henderson from Cameron Dollar. Got, the only thing you got to do is block out, including the guards. There's no reason for the guards not to block out. That's how Dollar gets that one. J.R. Henderson missed some games late in the season with a sore throat and the flu. There's Luellis on the left wing. Had 14 points against Penn in the Ivy League playoff game. That allowed Princeton to get into the NCAAs. Toby Bailey spotting up. McCoy, Goodrich going after the basketball, and it's knocked out of bounds by Jelani McCoy. Once again, our bracket, Connecticut beating Colgate, Eastern Michigan over Duke convincingly, Mississippi State, they fell asleep in the first half, came back to beat VCU, and they will play the winner of this game. Still trying to see if Princeton can get a good shot off. You know, the thing about UCLA, even if they go on his own, they have guys with such good ability that they still can get out and extend you when you're taking a shot. Sidney Johnson and J.R. Henderson with the rebound. Princeton conceding the offensive rebound. You watch all five guys will sprint back after a shot because that's the biggest liability they have, the transition game of the Bruins. And we want to remind some of our viewers that we will be leaving a, us in a few minutes to see Clemson and Georgia from Albuquerque, New Mexico. 7-0 UCLA. Out to an early lead. Four minutes into the first half. UCLA 3 of 7 from the field. The star for Princeton is Goodridge, but his problem is he will have a very difficult time getting a shot over Jelani McCoy. At 6 to 9, he's got Levin, if you will. Long arms, active player, and it would make it difficult for Goodridge to even get the ball and make a play with it. Jelani McCoy already three rebounds. He turned 18 years old in December. There's O'Bannon showing the ball fake. Lobbed inside, batted away by Goodrich. 15-42, left in the first half, UCLO 7-0. Yeah, well, Pete Carrill has meant so much to basketball. Anybody who has ever been involved in it, you talk to a lot of the coaches who have been involved 15, 20 years, they all talk about Pete Carrill and his ability to just teach the fundamental of, fundamentals of the game, and that's what has brought about the success 
that they've had at Princeton, just that ability. But I, you, you and I talked to him yesterday. He is a funny, funny man, one-liners all day long. I love coaches who don't take themselves too seriously, and this man definitely doesn't do that. Carell, only one losing season in 29 years. He was 11-15 in 1985. Won the NIT championship in 1975. 75, he had a great Final Four team with Bill Bradley. Here's Sidney Johnson. Johnson on the right wing inside Goodrich. Fakes the move on the baseline. The kick out, Chris Doyle, and he'll knock it down. Three for Doyle, 25, Tiger. Chris Doyle, senior out of San Antonio, Texas. Gets the Tigers on the board. Tigers have to get out and, and try to fend defensively. The biggest problem on this end is just going to be offensive rebounds because UCLA will shoot the ball, and even though you're in the zone, they can chase it down. Cameron Dollar trying to create something inside. He'll turn it over. Third turnover of the ball game for the Bruins. UCLA, they come into the game 23 and 7, 16 and 2. They won the Pac-10. However, they are a fourth seed, and that upset a lot of people in Los Angeles. Yeah, they were disappointed in that because if the, they were, then they make a good argument. The committee has said that it's the con, it's your conference regular season that you show that you had this prolonged, I guess, sh good showing, and then they show well and win the conference by three, and they get seated out in the West. And they were very disappointed with that, and particularly in light of the fact that it was Arizona who got seated in 10 feet. So after a slow start, Princeton, they've hit their last two shots, and now they trail at 7-6. Tigers on a 6-0 run. Knocked away, and last touch by Toby Bailey. One thing that UCLA has to be careful of, and Jim Herrick knows it and said it to us yesterday, he does not want to have to play Princeton from behind. They play a deliberate game. They can get shots off. Whether or not they're making them is to be seen, but they're a deliberate team, so you don't want to be behind a team that plays deliberate. There's Henderson, guarded by Bailey. He'll run through. Doyle got a good look, and he shot an air ball. Jelani McCoy, another rebound. He's got four. O'Bannon, baseline, Bailey. And Cameron Dollar will back it out and start things over. Does a good job. He's the guy that they've missed for a long time. They had to play Toby Bailey at the point guard spot. And Toby's capable of handling the ball, but he's a shooter. That's what he does. And they needed to get Cameron Dollar back on the floor. Had that great game against Arkansas after Tyus Hedney got hurt in the finals last year. O'Bannon turning on the baseline, and he got the shooter's roll. Charles O'Bannon, a first team all pac 10 selection. Here's Goodrich. Jump. Oh, Jay. That's goaltending. That's not even close. Jelani McCoy set a blocks record at UCLA as a freshman. And he allows the Bruins to score on the other end. They lead it 11 to 6. Goodrich underneath. And he'll get the foul. If there's any chance that the ball is coming down after you let it go and it gets blocked, that is goaltending. That shot is starting down toward the basket. And that's what Goodridge is trying to say to the officials. McCoy set a single season shot blocks record this year with 101. He's a freshman out of San Diego, California. And we want to remind some of our viewers that we will be leaving us in a few minutes to see Monmouth and Marquette in Providence, Rhode Island. You, Pete Carrill and his bench, I mean, they, in, in unison, they got up to try to get that call. Monmouth only about 25, 30 miles from Princeton. So two teams from the Jersey area getting in the big dance. Princeton finished the Ivy League season 12 and two, tied with Penn. They beat Penn in the playoff game, 63-56. And we'll get a whistle. They call it tripping foul. 
And it looks to me that's what they want to call because what happened is Toby Bailey was getting ready to make a move. You can see right there, he get re he's getting ready to make the move. Mitch Henderson anticipates it goes down, but you saw his feet. He did trip Toby Bailey and got called for the foul. 11.58 left in the first half, 11.6. Kevin Dempsey in the game right now for the Bruins along with Chris Johnson. There's O'Bannon. Johnson. Bailey. Got away with a walk there. Jelani McCoy with an air ball and a whistle inside. Goodrich got away with a little bit of a foul. Got away with a walk to Toby Bailey. That's his second. Charles O'Bannon last year, he had a chance to play with his brother, Ed, who is now with the New Jersey Nets in the National Basketball Association. His role has changed a bit since last year. Without a doubt, and as I talked to the team, and I did earlier in the season, matter of fact, the beginning of the season, Charles O'Bannon said that he'd have to become one of the, the leaders, and that's what Jim Herrick is asking to do, be much more vocal, take it over, do what his brother did. But, you know, Ed O'Bannon, had he was a fifth-year senior. There's a, a great deal more maturity when you're a fifth-year senior as opposed to being a junior. So there's a way to go for Charles O'Bannon to be what Ed was in that department. Dempsey, three-pointer, off the front of the rim. And an over-the-back foul called on Jelani McCoy. 11-18 left in the first half, 12-6 UCLA. But beyond that, Sidney Johnson told me they haven't had much of a chance to get too sentimental, and that's because in true Pete Carrill fashion, he's been treating this just like any other game, not allowing the players to think about anything else. Back to you guys. Thanks, Andrea. Yeah, that, that's what Pete Carrill would do. I mean, and that's the good. I like the way he handled that. He doesn't want anybody to get sentimental about the fact that he thinks it's time to move on. He just he wants to just move on and go on with his life. Now, moving on does not mean that Pete Carrill won't be on some sideline in some capacity next year. It's a possibility that he could take some kind of advisory position with an NBA team. Toby Bailey. Now, this is a game that features two teams with very contrasting styles. Princeton, their scoring defense leads the nation, holding teams to 51.5% per game. While UCLA, they shoot 53% from the field. That's number one in the nation in scoring. Well, that's because UCLA gets out in transition and runs as well as anybody. That's why their percentages are like that. And the scoring defense for Princeton comes about because they're deliberate in their offense. Not that they guard you so well, but they slow the tempo of the game down. And sometimes teams get impatient offensively playing against them. So Mitch Henderson hits the jumper. Under the 10 minute mark now, UCLA up 12 to 9. Here's Bailey, and he's bumped at the free throw line. Looks like it'll be Henderson. And when you talk about Princeton basketball, Quinn, you talk about patience. Remember, they almost beat Georgetown and Providence just by being patient, moving the ball until they can get the shot that they want. You see the nice little screen at the top for Henderson to drill the three. Toby Bailey too strong. Backside rebound goes to Henderson. He's in a hurry, tries to bounce pass in traffic, and will get a kick ball. And Pete Carrill, you could hear him say, what are you doing? Because Mitch Henderson has to understand, there's nowhere for you to go. Even if he catches that ball, there's nowhere to go because UCLA will get back because that's what they do every day in practice. Mitch Henderson coming back home to play. He's a sophomore from Culver, Indiana. Probably the best athlete on the team as Toby Bailey takes a seat. He's replaced by Myers, Bob Myers. Also in the ball game right now for Princeton, Brian Earl, back door, Earl, unable to make the catch. Brian Earl is the brother of Dan Earl, who plays at Penn State. Had some interest in going there, but Penn State had some other people in mind. They skip it, Earl. He can't get the jumper to fall. Rebound, Chris Johnson ahead to Dollar. Pushing it up the left side, Dollar. Chris Johnson. Decides to take it himself and nails it. Yeah, Chris Johnson is the, the son of Marcus Johnson, who I played with uh, in Milwaukee. 
this this young man has become an outstanding player for him. When Chris Johnson was playing, when they played at US, USC, they called his play nine straight times, and he either got a basket or got fouled seven of those times. That's big time play. Had a career high 36 points earlier this year against California. Goodrich has it swiped away, going up for the hook. 14 to nine. Johnson again on the baseline, and he's gone for the foul. And you take a look at Jim Herrick. You see Chris Johnson right there. He, he makes the move, and the official felt that he used, created some advantage for himself, so they call the offensive foul. So Mitch Henderson will walk the ball up the floor. Princeton down 14-9. Henderson jab step. Kick it back out. Sidney Johnson, Doyle. He's cut off on the baseline by Myers. This is much more penetration than Princeton had when they started the game. Nine on the shot clock. Seven. Henderson floating away. And it's recovered by Goodrich. He throws it out the basket. He didn't have to take the second shot. When the shot went up the first time, he shot, thought the 35-second shot clock was going to go off. But he tipped it, and it hit the rim, so the clock reset. So the second shot he took, he didn't have to take so quickly. 2-3 zone right now by Princeton. And somebody gets a hand on it, knocked out of bounds. We'll stay down here. 7.38 to go, 14-9 UCLA. His first eight seasons, including the national championship last year. Yeah, the UCLA, that was a record. He's the winning this coast that, that started at UCLA, including John Wooden, Wooden having won those 20 games, 20 plus games. No. Okay, the officials, I didn't think they were going to call it. He, he tried to tip the ball in the air, and then momentarily they just paused. Now, we want to remind some of our viewers that we will be leaving us in a few minutes to see Canisius and Utah in Dallas. 7-14 to go, 14-9 Princeton. Right now, I'd have to say, Quinn, that this score is very favorable to the Tigers. Well, they've got to be able to just get some baskets. I would say the score is favorable, but UCLA, their, their young team, this team, the exact team, will be back. In, for all practical purposes, should they do well in the tournament. They have underclassmen with the exception of Omar Gibbons. So they, they've got some underclassmen with Dem Dempsey. So the major players come back and play. So what they just need to do is just stay patient and you'll see the talent come out because they got they have a lot of talent on this team. Only one senior on the ball club, Kevin Dempsey out of San Jose. Here's Chris Johnson fading away. Somehow got that shot off and he drew contact. I, mean, why, I don't know why you would follow him on a turnaround jump shot. Chris Johnson gets the ball and makes a move, and he just turns. There's nothing for Johnson to follow him for. He definitely hits him on the arm. You let him take that one over pressure. Sidney Johnson picking up his first. That's a 15 foul against Princeton. So Chris Johnson, 75% free throw shooter on the year, has battled back problems. Suffered a back injury against Washington State, and he's been receiving treatment. But is in the lineup for this evening. 16 to 9. Goodrich. Here's Sidney Johnson back to Henderson, and he'll stroke it. Well, that's the one you've got to make. If you get a pick, a pick they stand so close to Goodrich that if you let Goodrich set a pick, his man won't step out, and Henderson can shoot a jump shot over the top. Six points for Mitch Henderson. And you can be sure that Mitch Henderson is fired up. Playing back in the state of Indiana. He's from Culver, Indiana. So Dempsey will take a seat and back in the ball game. Toby Bailey. And also Charles O'Bannon. Now keep your eye on O'Bannon running the baseline. He'll look for the lob. Chris Johnson poked away by Henderson. Well, Henderson has been real active around the basketball. 
Johnson probably has not been able to do a lot of practicing considering he hurt his back against Washington State. They probably kept him out, so he'll be a little rusty. Mitch Henderson, a very good defender, started 20 games last year as a freshman. Here's Doyle. Check that Earl. So Henderson is throwing the ball to uh, Earl or whatever the guard's name is. Any one of the guards that goes through there, the problem is you got to throw him the ball where he can do something with it. With UCLA where they are, he can't do anything with it. Whipped inside by Steve Goodrich from Chris Doyle. And Goodrich gets his first two of the game. A two-point lead for UCLA. And as you talked about, Quinn, in 1989, Georgetown with a huge scare by Princeton as they hung on to win that game in the final seconds, 50 to 49. They win it because Alonzo Morning gets a, a goes and gets a block. But to this day, if you listen to Princeton, they'll tell you that they think it was a foul. There's Mitch Henderson. With a great take left-handed to, to get there. Henderson, he can run a little bit too, especially with the basketball. And he ties it all up at 16. So for UCLA, the wrong thing to do is give this Princeton team life. Oh, he traveled. And you can hear who the fans are rooting for. Princeton, they'll scare you to death if you're a, a major college and you see them in the first round. Look at what they've done against Syracuse and Teams like Villanova and Georgetown. Yeah, they'll scare you because they, they're just so patient and deliberate with their offense. And, you know, if the shooters are making shots, they put a lot of pressure on them. It's Goodrich, Sidney Johnson to the hole. The first time in the game, Princeton on a 7-0 run in the last two minutes and 12 seconds. 3.53 to go in the first half. 16-16, a number four seed against a 13 seed. UCLA's doing a good job staying patient here. They've got the shot clock down to 10. Now they just don't have to panic. Dollar trying to force it inside to Johnson. And another turnover. And that was a little bit of a panic because all of a sudden everybody got collapsed in the paint and Dollar tried to force a pass instead of bringing it out and forcing his man to come with him so he could enter the ball. Ryan Earl. Here's Johnson. The only three-time captain in Princeton basketball history. Goodrich, jump hook. Snared down by J.R. Henderson. Couldn't get that one to go down, but he got his hook shot. It never got his balance. Henderson did a good job maintaining his position, and Goodrich never got his own balance. Obana. And a whistle and a foul. It looks like Sidney Johnson called for the foul over the back. 2.45 to go, 16 up. All right, we have one team from New Jersey tied with UCLA, Princeton. Meanwhile, let's check in with Monmouth. And the Hawks playing Marquette East Region action. This is Monmouth with the ball down 13-10. 12 minutes to go in the first half, Clark. They're doing a pretty good job of running their half-court offense and getting high-quality shots. That wasn't one of them, but for the most part, they've gotten good shots and made them. Winner of this game will be taking on Arkansas in the next round. Meanwhile, out in Albuquerque at the pit, here's a three launched by Clemson, and that brings the Tigers within one. This is a battle of youth versus experience. Clemson, a young squad. They play four freshmen in their starting five. Georgia, on the other hand, typically starts five seniors, although Pertha Robinson, their starting point guard, unavailable tonight because of a stomach flu. And with that bucket inside, Clemson takes the lead. What is the deal with the virus going around uh, this NCAA tournament, Keith Van Horn from Utah, he is out as we see his coach Rick Majerus on the sideline, working the sideline there in Dallas, Midwest action, Utah and Canisius, Canisius with the ball, Utes leading 8-6. 
in the early going. Keith Van Horn out. Well, this Kinesis team, they're very solid. Meeks is a good go-to guy inside. I'd expect Brandon Jesse for Utah to try to be a lot more aggressive in the absence of Keith Van Horn tonight. You mentioned Pertha Robinson out at Georgia. Derek Petit from Temple has the flu. Gary Kittles with the stomach virus. Well, let's get back to Princeton UCLA. 126 to go. We're still tied at 16 apiece, and UCLA knocks the ball out of bounds. Princeton will get it back. So far, UCLA, they've turned the ball over 10 times, and Princeton, they've scored 10 points off those turnovers. You can see that the game is going the way Princeton wants it. When you're using 25 seconds off the, off the clock, that's the way Pete Carrillo wants the game to go with his team because he wants to have the patience. What UCLA has to be able to do is on the defensive end stay patient. They've come down, they've come down a couple occasions taking some quick shots, but even when they're starting to take the shots and they run the shot clock down, they're not in rhythm like they normally are. As Loellis has it rattled out. And Toby Bailey with his fifth rebound. Under a minute to play. We're tied at 16. Princeton just imposing their will right now on UCLA. What they've been able to do is change defense, gone from man to man to zone to force the ball to be shot from the outside and gotten some plays made defensively, as you see an offensive play made that time by Charles O'Bannon. O'Bannon will go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. 18-16 UCLA. Now the Bruins coming to this game averaging 78 points a game. Well, obviously this is not the tempo they want to have, but if you can get something going to the basket, maybe get to the foul line, you can force, possibly you would like to think that they could force Princeton to move their speed up in terms of how they handle the ball. You won't have Princeton do that. They stay within their game. So on the main basket, UCLA will press full court and Pete Carrillo will take a quick 20 second time out. They're guys that can make the sophisticated play, but the, the nice little entry pass, they just don't do a very good job of that anymore. 35 seconds of play, 29 seconds on the shot clock for the Tigers. They're down 19-16. And Steve Goodrich will be patient and get it back to Sidney Johnson. 18 on the shot clock. Oh, they got it. Oh, they got it. You could see it coming because the guy, the wingman on this side, faked like he was coming out away from the basket. Five points for Gabe Luellis. One point ball game. Shot clock turned off. Six to go. O'Bannon for three. And it's hauled down. Oh, he fouled him. He fouled him before it went out. They're not in the bonus. Only the 14th foul against UCLA. So at the end of the first half of play, Princeton using the judicious offense, cutting back door, they trail 19-18. Well, Chris Johnson watching the ball. This goes right behind him, gets a little layup made. Coming up, we'll go back to New York. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg. What they say won't make a lot of difference because I won't get to hear it. And there are some of the major victories in Coach Carrill's career so far. Career? More like administration. <laughs> As a matter of fact, his coaching career spanning seven presidents. And right now, UCLA got all kinds of trouble with this Princeton team. They lead it only 19 to 18. And your statistics from the first half of play, UCLA shooting 39%, they shoot 53% on the season. Yeah, and what they, the real problem for them was they only got up 18 shots. That's just not something that UCLA can do. A team that runs like they do, they'll get up close to 50, 60 shots a game, so they've got to pick up the tempo here. UCLA, 19 points, their lowest scoring half of the season. The previous low was 26 points against Washington State in January. 
Again, Princeton comes out of their 1 2 2 zone, trying to for force the jump shot, keep McCoy, uh, Jelani McCoy, away from the basket for offensive rebound. There's J.R. Anderson. His shot short as well. And you can see UCLA really having problems getting in sync offensively. And a lot of that comes because you force it because of their defensive impatience. Goodrich, his shot off the mark as well. Princeton on the season. ASU 47%, 35% from the three point line. You got a young Princeton team out trying to do something here. They've got to do a better job of, of being patient. As does UCLA, instead of taking quick shots, run, it, run the offense around a little bit, maybe inside out, before like Steve Goodrich took his shot. 11 turnovers for the Bruins. And our score stays at 19-18. Here's Doyle driving the baseline, and a whistle. Let's check in with Andrea Joyce. All right, Gus, as you've probably guessed, uh, Princeton is very happy with the way they've been able to keep UCLA in a half-court game. This is exactly the kind of game that UCLA expected, a slow, deliberate pace. The coaches told the players at halftime they need better ball movement and better man movement against Princeton's zone in the second half. Back to you guys. Robbed inside, Henderson. Get better movement. The best way to do that against any zone is to come in from the backside of it, but you got to slice through the zone. UCLA is just kind of jogging through it, not getting out of sight of the defender before they come into offensive position. There's Gabe Luellis. Steve Goodrich got position on the block. You, you see what the patience got them. They've gotten the ball in position a couple times now. Got Jelani McCoy out of position on that one as Goodrich got it on the block and went to the other side. They wrote this is ball movement and, and people moving. You see Goodrich look like he's going one side. McCoy tries to recover and does it too late. Goodrich has good inside position, throws it over his head. And the bench is obviously excited about the fact that they've got a play to run. They've had two plays that they really designed to run for Princeton, basically. The back door near the end of the first half and that play where they move Jelani McCoy in one direction and take him back another one. Batted back out by Chris Doyle. Princeton, their first lead of the game. Here's Doyle, the only senior on the floor right now. He may be the only senior, but this exposing the ball to uh, the defense may not be the way you want to go about it with UCLA. 11 on the shot clock, the kick out, Doyle for three. Jelani McCoy calls it down. He's got six rebounds, 2019 Tigers. O'Bannon, lefty jump shot, and he buries it. That's what I'm talking about, coming from behind. They never saw Charles O'Bannon run out to the corner. He was on one side and stayed behind the defense, and they lost track of him. And that's how he gets that easy shot. There's Goodrich. See, Princeton is, has always has at least two people constantly in motion so the defense can't settle on him. Sidney Johnson. Interesting release for Sidney Johnson with his jump shot. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's at least interesting. It's almost a push shot. But we'll say unconventional. There's O'Bannon, 16 on the shot clock. 21-20 Bruins. And UCLA will get a new 35. Brandon Boyd, because that kick, that kick was intentional, so they'll get a new 35 second clock. Brandon Lloyd coming in the game. He's a freshman from Tulsa to run the point guard. O'Bannon, pump fake. They swing it all the way around McCoy. They're getting the ball movement now. UCLA has got to start moving people a little bit better. Toby Bailey. Oh, that's a foul on Chris Johnson. No chance. Chris Johnson drawing the foul. UCLA up by one. Jimmy O'Brien's team at BC played very well in the Big East. He was the co-coach of the year along with Coach Calhoun at Connecticut. 
Yeah, that'll, that'll be a good game. Indiana has started to play pretty well late, but you're right. Boston College was a team that had a, a pretty good shot near the end to even make it to the NCAA. Gabe Luellis, another backdoor cut. For the Tigers. And Princeton takes the lead. He's got seven. Approaching the 15 minute mark of the second half. You know what I said in that thing? Well, why, would people, why would people cheer for Princeton? You know, you sit and you watch it, a, a group of talented, a talented group, and you see them play one way, and you see a group with probably less talent, but they play together, do everything with the same thought in mind, and you see them have some success. So for some strange reason, you just root for them. Here's Luellis in transition again. Oh, and he missed the three-point play. What an opportunity for Gabe Luellis, a freshman. What an opportunity for Princeton. They don't Number get many, 20, <laughs> many fast breaks. And right there, they were able to get a rebound. Dole gets it, throws it up ahead. Luellis Luella gets it, and he wasn't able to finish it. He gets in good position. They just don't get many breaks and any easy opportunities, and they miss the chance at a three-point play, but they still get two foul shots. Princeton on top, 22-21. Luellis missing the free throw. Fourteen fifty-one to go in the second half. Princeton surprising UCLA. They now lead it by two points. 23-21. Held UCLA to their lowest half of the season. In the first half, only 19 points. Chris Johnson to the cup. Yeah, he's explosive. He can get to the basket, can Chris Johnson. But what they're, I see Jelani McCoy hollering at Chris Johnson, telling to call for the ball, call for the ball, because Johnson is a guy they know can get started offensively for them and can carry them. So it's tied up 23, 14, 15 to go. Third tie of the ball game. Skip pass, Doyle. Rebound, Toby Bailey. Bailey, out running. O'Bannon on the baseline. His shot is short. Good rebound by Chris Doyle. Here's Sidney Johnson. And he'll wisely Nickel. slow things good up. Good choice. He, there, was, there were some potential numbers there, but UCLA was doing a good job starting to get more people back than did Princeton going on the fast break. Now you see UCLA, they show some. Yeah, they're in the zone to try to force some outside shots because Princeton hadn't shown any, any real proclivity to make shots on a consistent basis. Henderson. Rebounded by Doyle. They'll get a new 35. Doyle's been big for them on both ends on the boards. He hasn't been able to make a lot of shots, but he's, he's been big on the boards. He's got three rebounds. And Luellis. For traveling. So UCLA, they've had some troubles. Averaging 79 points, only 23 this evening, shooting 53% on the season from the field, only 36 this evening. And as you mentioned, Quinn, they're not getting the shots that they normally get. Yeah, they won't get as many shots, so they've got to make it just like that. You got to get them at a premium. Brandon Lord drills that three pointer. Lloyd, two-time Oklahoma Gatorade Player of the Year out of Tulsa. You can see what he can do. He can stand out there. He can shoot that shot. See, that's what they've got to do. They've got to make that. See, that shot there, Princeton's got to make. Because once the ball goes inside, the defense collapses on it, but they've got to make an open shot. Look at the ball movement by Princeton. Really whipping the ball around. Johnson. He believes in his shot. He's got a lot of confidence in his shot. Sidney Johnson from the parking lot. And it's all tied up at 26. On the other end, Chris Johnson. Foul. And he draws a foul. Balazon, Princeton, number 25. Watch Royal the passing on offense for Princeton. Well, they'll they'll Jesus just keep first. going until they get it to the open man. What they really like to do is get it inside. That's Johnson. Brian That's Rose after about the 12th pass. 
got to get out there. You got to get out there on, on Lloyd. That's why they put him in the game because Cameron Dollar is not a good shooter, but Lloyd can. Brandon Lloyd has hit two straight shots. UCLA has taken a 29-26 lead, under 12 to play in the second half. Princeton, inside. Yeah, they've been able to get it inside. He's been throwing it back outside periodically. Yes. Goodrich, that time, he just took it to the basket and caught Jelani with his hands down. Steve Goodrich from Sidney Johnson. Here's Bailey. Lloyd again. Rebounded on the weak side by Mitch Henderson. Princeton changed up that time, went to a sagging man-to-man, -man, was able to get back out again and get a little bit of a hand toward Lloyd's face. In the corner, that's Brian Earl. He's hesitant about pulling the trigger. Well, the skip pass is one of the things Princeton is noted for. He'll have to shoot it this time and bury it! sense of purpose quicker with more of thought about where they're trying to get and what they're trying to get accomplished and we get our sixth tie of the ball game at 31 UCLA comes back out goes into a man-to-man -man. Earl again never got set Kobe Bailey at 6'9 got over to 6'1 Earl and he never got set here's Bailey and a five Chris Doyle says what are you talking about I didn't touch him but I think he did Oh, he got it. I don't think there's any doubt about that. He got the ball, but he found it. Pete Carell, I think he sided with Doyle. Well, you know, you would expect him to. Kobe Bailey will go. Now, he gets the ball, then he gets him on the arm. Bailey at the line, two shots for the Bruins. So, Toby Bailey heads to the free throw line, two of eight from the field. And he'll sink his first free throw. Shooting 63% on the season. Second one good as well. UCLA approaching the 10 minute mark. They lead by two. Under Pete Carrill. Yeah, it is. I mean, obviously, not only Pete Carrill has a lot of confidence in Camarade, but the, the institution in Princeton does as well. I think they're turning over in good hands. You can get some continuity of thought considering how long they've been together. 33-31, under 10 to play. Chris is going to have to start making something happen. they got eight seconds on the shot clock. You, get, you can't keep throwing it around. This is when it becomes UCLA's kind of game. Earl, off the front of the rim. As you start to, once you get down in that time, UCLA can scramble better than Princeton can beating people off the dribble. Here's Toby Bailey behind the three-point line, and it falls. Three for Toby so Toby Bailey, Bailey with 10 points. UCLA. UCLA trying to stretch their lead. They're now up 36-31. And we'll get a whistle and a 20-second timeout called by the Bruins. And Mississippi State beat VCU 58-51. UCLA right now on a 7-0 run. The last 205. 36-31. Sidney Johnson with the heave. They just told Chris Johnson about that in the huddle. And they, and they told him exactly what to do. And Chris Johnson fell asleep and Goodrich stepped up and set a pick on him. And I believe Jim Harris is going to switch and put Toby Bailey on him next. And Toby Bailey is starting to light it up a little bit. He's got 12. Make that 13. Yeah, they did. They switched and put Toby Bailey on Sidney Johnson because uh, Chris Johnson fell asleep on him. Chris Johnson now guarding Mitch Henderson. Henderson can't beat him off the dribble. Here's Goodrich. 
15 on the shot clock. Oh, got it. Door. <laughs> Henderson, and he can't make the layup. But he comes back with the steal. Why he couldn't make the layup was because Jelani McCoy got a hand over there, and Henderson was afraid to get close to it, so he didn't follow through on it. Inside, Goodrich. Charles O'Bannon now guarding Sidney Johnson. Here's Earl, dribble penetration, has it poked away, and a foul. Goodridge has done such a good job, but Jim Harris has had to try to figure out how to contain this team. If Goodridge does a good job, then Jelani McCoy has to come out. That's how Earl turns the corner. You see, McCoy is nowhere to be found. He's been active before. He just never gets there. 7.38, we'll be back in the morning. Reggie Miller, Larry Brown also in the stands. Both one coaching for the Indiana Pacers, the other playing. Here's Henderson on the baseline. 39-34. 15 on the shot clock. 7-14 on the game clock. Goodrich posted up, calling for the rock. This is where it starts to move a little bit toward UCLA because they can start working just on their quickness. And he didn't even see the shot clock. Sidney Johnson with the air ball, and that will be a shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. Five point lead for the Bruins from UCLA. Under seven minutes to play in Indianapolis, side of the Southeast region. This our fourth and final game. UCLA has come out, they've been a lot more aggressive. But the other thing I think they've done offensively, they've done what Jim Herrick has told them to do. They've done a better job of moving themselves along with the basketball. Oh, no! Oh, Bannon. He will run the baseline and look for the line. Knocked out of bounds, however, by Princeton. O'Bannon is he'll go to this side over here, and then he'll stand right there. He wants it. And you can see that ball is up there. He almost was able to get it. Princeton comes and plays a little 2 3 out of that out of bounds situation. There's Chris Johnson. O'Bannon with space will pass up on the jumper. Cannot you can't be quick taking your jump shots. If you can get it to go inside and it comes back to you, then you got a better chance. Here's Johnson wheeling. That fellow's got great footwork. He was inside, headed to the left, and just ball faked it and turned and stayed in good balance and position to come back with a little jump hook. Right now, UCLA on a 12-3 run in the last four minutes and change. Toby Bailey ahead of the field on Van a great catch, but he can't lay it in. What UCLA is doing is they've got the tempo moving up a little bit, and Pete Carrill sees it and just decided to call the timeout because his team can't play at this pace. 41-34, UCLA and the Bruins leading the ball game, trying to run at the same time. Up 41-34, Princeton with the basketball. Now I would say for Princeton, they need to kind of settle in and get themselves a nice basket here because UCLA is starting to better understand what it is Princeton's trying to do. See, they're running at shots better and, and just they just have a better feel. You can just sense it in UCLA. They are rebounding Princeton 29 to 17. That helps too. Seven-point lead matches the biggest lead for UCLA, but Sidney Johnson with the answer. He's got nine. See, he brings it back close, but if they don't make a basket there, UCLA comes down and scores. It becomes hard because of the way Princeton plays, that they're so deliberate for them to catch up. All three-pointers for Sidney Johnson. He came into this game shooting 32% from the three-point line. Here's Jelani McCoy putting it on the floor on the hop inside and a five. That's the first time he's done that, but he's very capable of putting the ball on the floor. 
One of his strengths at 6'9", 6'10", is to be able to get the ball, get himself to the basket in the position to score. Fourth on the team. Fourth team foul called against Princeton. And they'll pick up their fifth. This is Steve Goodrich trying to defend the inbounds. His third. And Pete Carrill. Here's Bailey, leaning in, lets it go with one hand, and it's snared by Goodrich. Yeah, he had a tough shot he was trying to take there, and Princeton was already inside on the position, so they just blocked out, got the rebound. 41-37. Johnson. You see now that UCLA is stepping up on the picks when Johnson looks like he wants to shoot a shot. They weren't doing that before. Ten on the shot clock. Doyle attacks the basket on the baseline. Reverse layup by Goodrich. Every time Doyle, uh, Goodrich gets the ball, he knows with Jelani McCoy that you need to find a way to use the rim to protect yourself. Oh, it'd be uh, how big it would be uh, a big upset because in, in the sense that that Pete Carrill in his own heart knows from a talent standpoint, this is not one he, he thinks he feels he can win. He knows if his team come play well and UCLA doesn't, he's got a shot. But it still would be a substantial upset, upset as they just call an offensive foul on Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson picking up number four. And the game summary, Princeton right now on a 5-0 run. UCLA shooting 42%, Tigers 36%. UCLA 16 points, points from their bench. Princeton, you know, one of the things they, they can generally do is get the ball to Goodrich because he tried to draw a foul, but you can get it to Goodrich because Jelani McCoy doesn't normally get out there. Fans not happy with that call. I'm not sure that was no call. I'm not sure that was really a foul. I think if he, if all he had to do was, was stay bent over a little bit, but once he straightened up, he allowed O'Bannon to come down and, and come down clear. And a steal, Doyle to Henderson, 3-0-1, bounce pass, Johnson! Oh, 11 points for Sidney Johnson, 2.50 to go! They've picked up some loyal fans all of a sudden. The crowd definitely behind the Tigers. Here's Bailey. This is impatient offense. Poked away, 11 on the shot clock. Johnson picks up his dribble. Six on the shot clock. Bailey, short. Knocked out of bounds with the other way. That's why I said it's impatient offense. You could see at no point could you see UCLA settle down, somebody get the ball as Doyle gets there. He gets his hand on it, get a chance to push it up. And then Henderson makes the pass to Sidney Johnson. And then coming back the other end, just not patience on UCLA's part. Here's Goodrich, backdoor cut Johnson. He can't handle the pass. Loose ball, picked up by the Tigers. But the shot clock doesn't change. And we have an injured player in the Jelani, Princeton backcourt. Yeah, Jelani McCoy. He's holding the back of his head. And the freshman gets up. We'll get a chance to see him. It's Jelani McCoy. He tries to come up with the ball there. And then he just kind of takes a spill and grabs his head. It didn't look like anybody hit him. But there's 14 seconds on the shot clock, and Princeton has to remember that this has not been reset. 14 on the shot clock, 157 on the game clock. We're tied at 41 in the final game of the first day at the Southeast region. The winner to play Mississippi State, Luella Short. And Jelani McCoy with the rebound. So they, they forgot. There's a time out coming. But they forgot how much time was on the shot clock. We're tied at 41. Back in a moment.
The defending national champion Bruins from UCLA locked up in a battle with Princeton. They're locked up with the ball. With the basketball, 135 to go. Tied at 41. Chris Johnson calling for the ball, posted up inside. Couldn't get it because Goodrich can come off Jelani McCoy. Reset on the 20, on the 35 second clock. So many times, Pete Carrillo and the Princeton Tigers have been close, always coming near the upset in the first round of the NCAA tournament, whether it be Syracuse or Georgetown. Now UCLA. Offensive foul, no question. Sorry, Gus, there's no doubt about it. That's an offensive foul. Toby Bailey tried to create a play that was not there. That's impatient. That's a young team, and that's what Jim Harris has been trying to do, keep this team patient because they're so young. On the floor right now for Princeton, Sidney Johnson, the captain, Mitch Henderson. There in the backcourt, Gabe Lewellis, Steve Goodrich, and Chris Doyle. 114 left. 24 on the shot clock. Here's Henderson. Sidney Johnson and a steal. And they call that an intentional foul, which means he gets two shots and the ball. A minute and two seconds remaining. And at this stage, it's more important. I mean, the foul shots are great, but it's more important that you have the ball because the way this is going, the team with the ball has a chance to win it. Bounce right off of Sidney Johnson's hand, and he just reached out and grabbed Cameron Dollar. It's an intentional foul. There's no question about it. Dollar, a 67% free throw shooter. He's got no points, and that was his first free throw attempt. Well, that's why they had Lloyd in the game of before, because Dollar wasn't doing anything for him. The second one falls off as well. UCLA on the season shooting 67%, but they'll get the ball back. Well, that's why I was saying that was the most important part of it. They get the ball back. I wasn't sure if the dollar was going to make the shots, but they get the ball. But they're still going to have to give up possessions here. One minute. To go. One minute. 41. 41, our score. Oh, oh did he come up with it? by Henderson. Out of bounds. They're calling him out of bounds. Henderson tried to get a timeout his way out but didn't get it get a chance to see it Cameron Dollar tries to make a pass Henderson gets it couldn't see it but his left foot looked to be out of bounds tough angle 25 seconds on the shot clock yes 48 on the game clock will this be the year for Pete Carrell after 29 big ones Here's Chris Johnson, dribble penetration, short, scramble, and Steve Goodrich coming out with the ball, 29 seconds left, Princeton with the basketball, shot clock turned off, 22 and counting, and we get a time out, Pete Carroll and the Princeton Tigers have got a chance to win it. Forty-one, forty-one, twenty-one ticks remaining. Princeton with the basketball. UCLA two timeouts. Princeton with one. The next foul. Both teams will be in the bonus. See, McCoy has come out this time. Normally, Goodrich could come and get it. You know they're going to try to run a backdoor play if they can get it. Under ten. Back door. seconds were on the sh on the clock when they called timeout so he's trying to add, get it added up signature play for Princeton is back door Goodrich missed it the first time dribble toward the man goes back this time no doubt about it very nice back door Lou Ellis is able to get it in and watch the bench just go berserk <laughs> can you believe it 
for so many years, 29 seasons at Princeton. Pete Carrell has come close to pulling off the big upset. Look at him looking for the clock. Get that clock to run down. He's <laughs> he thought the clock was already down. His team right now, 1.3 seconds away from winning. Up 43-41. What's the strategy here for UCLA? They're, they're getting, first of all, they're going to have to get it in. The, if I'm in, I'm going to try to get it in Chris Johnson's hands. Because first of all, he can make he, he can make plays with one quick dribble. He can get to the basket. The only other option they have, the problem with doing it with Jelani McCoy, if he gets fouled, he's a less than a 65% foul shooter. That's the problem UCLA has. They're not a good foul shooting team. Remember 1989 when Princeton almost came up with the upset over John Thompson's Georgetown Hoyas. They finally lost it 50 to 49. And take one more look at the basket by the freshman, Lou Ellis. Well, first of all, they missed it the first time. Goodrich gets it. He was going to throw it that time and held up. And now watch. Lou Ellis goes out, dribbled toward it, and he goes back again. And he turned. It was Charles O'Bannon. He just turned him around. And that's how he was able to get the basket because O'Bannon lost track of where he was. And the smart play by Goodrich is to go toward Lou Ellis because then O'Bannon doesn't know whether he has to help or find his man. He didn't find his man. Petey Carell, his final season at Princeton, 29 years, 1.3 seconds away. Now they're still trying to decide how much time should be put on the shot clock, on the clock. And the official, wait a minute, how, I thought they called up the, the timeout on the, on the backcourt side. They're getting it in the front court. On the floor for UCLA, Cameron Dollar, Charles O'Bannon, Toby Bailey, Jelani McCoy, and Chris Johnson. Who takes the shot? And on this one, they may try to run it right here. I see they've got Toby Bailey here on in this side. You can get a, a little action back pick with Toby Bailey and uh, uh, Charles O'Bannon for back pick. And then you can step out to get it. And if they don't switch it, then throw the ball at the basket and let O'Bannon go and, and bring it down. This is a correctable error. This is about time. Now, when does the shot go in? All right, it'll go in about, I thought it was about, all right, it's 3.9. So the shot clock stopped. Now, when did he call timeout? See, that's the other part of it. When did he call timeout? Because he did not call timeout as soon as the ball went through the basket. Cameron Dollar pushed the ball up the floor. It's, I think it's Chris Johnson on the far side. We don't get to see him. He's calling timeout now. Now Chris Johnson calling timeout in the backcourt. Yeah, Chris Johnson is calling timeout. See, he, no, Chris Johnson is right there calling timeout at the official. The last man. There he is. All right. He's the last man right there. He's been in the official's face. So the ball is here when he calls. Right here, Bailey is, is called timeout. Now that's what they got to figure out. Either way, the ball can't go where they got Cameron Dollar taking the ball out. If they get 3.9. This is a correctable error as we mentioned before. They, they, they see it, they just got they got to take it back. I mean, there's no doubt about that. It is a correctable error. They're putting 2.2 seconds. 2.2 seconds. Then the ball has got to come all the way back. How did they get the ball up here? He never got there. And that's what Pete Carell is arguing about right now on the sidelines. If, if they're saying the timeout was back here and they had 2.2 seconds, then, the, then the, they've got to take the ball back to where that was. And we'll get a timeout on the floor. 2.2 seconds now on the game clock. 43-41 Princeton. <laughs> 2.2 seconds remaining. 
43-41. UCLA down. Cameron Dollar inbounding the basketball. Well, that's what a timeout was called, but they got to watch the log. Here's Bailey. He'll get it off. Oh, they beat him. The Princeton Tigers have pulled the upset. They beat the defending national champions. 43-41. to 41. Is this great for Pete Carrillo or what? This is what the tournament is all about. Everybody's got a shot at it. Give them a shot. They got themselves in the position to win this game. Did an excellent job.